I've been listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson, well, for years, but uh, this weekend, especially, um, I actually, I've been doing a lot of woodwork lately, and I like to just kind of put him on the, in the background. And um, he speaks a lot about like the importance of, like, I guess, communication, but um, the the importance of reading, how that can help you a lot in, in terms of your communication. I don't know if that's much what you've thought about yourself. Yeah, I think like, I, I don't know who it was that said that like reading is breathing in and writing is breathing out. And uh, we have to understand that that the written word, much like language, is a human technology. I mean, like we're all talking about AI at the moment. It's not natural. It's something that we developed, but it's something that we've developed in order to order our thoughts in such a way that we can communicate them to other people. I think what's great about reading is that it forces you to literally shut up and listen to someone else's point of view, particularly when it comes to nonfiction, but we can get into the sort of differences and why you read both. But when it comes to like trying to follow an argument, whether it's politics, philosophy, economics, whatever you're into, a scientific argument, when you are the reader, you have no choice but to sit and listen or to give up and move on to something else. You can't interrupt the writer. So the writer has the opportunity to present their entire argument to you. And that's the particularly in the book format. So this is what we lose when we only consuming blog content or podcasts or whatever that case may be. You're only getting a bit of the argument and you're often getting the argument interrupted, right? Interrupted whether it's with advertisements, interrupted whether it's with reader comments, interrupted whether it's with your host or your guests like myself, that sort of breaks that argument. Whereas if someone sat down and written a whole book, you're getting their whole argument. And you don't have to agree with that, but you have to sit down and listen to them complete that thought, right? So that's the sort of the humbling side of being a being a reader. Conversely, being a writer is something that we've done in order to order our own thoughts. Like if you're able to formulate a full argument, I mean, like I've said this quite a lot, I can like bang out a 600 word article in half an hour without even thinking about it, because that's very shallow. But then you get the challenge to write a 2000 word essay for someone and suddenly it can take weeks, right? This is like a mountainous task. You've got to order your thoughts around. And when it comes to writing a whole book, obviously that's a that involves a lot of thoughts and a lot of structured thought that has to be thought out in a cohesive argument that can stand in and of itself. So you kind of have to see this as, as a way to communicate our ideas fully formed rather than the discourse, which is like your what your Socrates and all of them were doing back in the day, which is more about figuring out what you think. But like the act of writing and reading is consuming or producing fully fledged thoughts that have already been through banter, being through the grinding mill of observation and all those other things put together. So I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, no, no, it's, it's a great way. I like, I, I hadn't even thought about it that way myself. So, so thanks a lot. So I think it's so amazing. If you think about a book, like exactly what you're saying, you know, like, I mean, I like to treat them almost as textbooks, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's fiction or, or, or nonfiction, but like, you know, this person has spent, like you said, like, I don't know, hundreds of hours, maybe, you know, not just researching, but, but writing and then, and then rewriting and everything. And you have this privilege for like, whatever it is, $10, you know, I know books may be a bit more expensive in South Africa, but like, you know, and, and you, you got what, 15 hours sort of thing, you know, depending on how fast you read it, just to kind of take in this, I guess it's almost like a summarized version of their best thoughts and, and wisdom and knowledge. And it's just like, wow, like, why wouldn't you do that? You know, it's just like such a gift to be able to read books. Yeah, exactly. And particularly the gift to be able to read books, which I said, it is a very artificial, very human technology that we've done, but allows us to get into the, the heads and get into the thoughts of people that don't live in our time and space, right? So whether they're people that we don't have a, a common language with, whether people that we don't share a timeline with, whether people we'd never interact with geographically speaking, it allows you to, to time travel and to actually converse with those people, to actually listen to what they what they meant as much as they were able to express it, which is which is a huge privilege. So it's a great technology, but I think it also comes full circle. So what's going on now with like AI, where you can give it a five word prompt and it'll write a novel for you and you can be an author. And I would say, what's the point of consuming that content? Because you're not getting a, uh, an actual person's point of view. If you're looking for a synthesized view, a sort of summary of everything that's gone on within the topic, that's very different. But that I would say, so using AI to create or to consume content becomes more of an academic exercise and less of a personal philosophical exercise, which sounds very grandiose, but like that's certainly why I read anything, whether it's fiction, whether it's nonfiction, whatever it is, I am reading in order to try and figure out what my own thoughts are. 
which is quite different to the academic pursuit of just getting to the correct answer to answer whatever question or solve whatever problem you have immediately available to you. I think the act of reading is by itself a, a slower process than that. It's the sort of the, it's the where the whole becomes greater than the sum of some of its parts when it comes to trying to figure out where you are, what what we're doing in this world and all the rest of it, to try and sort of hang that knowledge onto each other and figure out what I what I think. And uh, you can't do that if someone else is doing that for you. I've also had this argument with people with audiobooks, for example. Like, I think audiobooks are a great form of entertainment, but I don't think they solve the same thought ordering process, which I'm trying to talk about today, as actually reading. Because having a story read to you, which is something I did before I started reading for myself, as at that age of eight, or reading was something that was done to me or on something I participated in. It's a passive act. So it's an act of consuming, but act not actually engaging with the content, whereas actually physically reading is a physical act. It's an engagement that you're actually engaged with. So even if you, even though you are there as a student to listen to the to the, the writer who's put those thoughts on the page, you have to actively concentrate. You have to be part of that process. And you can't actually let your concentration slip, or you're gonna have to reread that paragraph. Whereas if it's an audio book, someone reading to you, it's not like you're actually actively engaged in sort of that that internal debate that you're not going to get if you're relying on people to summarize that, whether that's an audio book, whether that's someone else reading to you, which is all lovely forms of entertainment, great for getting a story and like watching TV, nothing wrong with that. But I think it fulfills a very different purpose. And certainly not the reason that I read or the way I read or the fact that I read physical books as much as possible rather than on a screen, because I do know the science behind that. I know that I can prove it from my own anecdotal evidence that reading on a paperback book, you're going to retain more of that information. And what is the purpose of reading? Is it to just knock off saying you've read something because you're able to skim through it quickly on your shiny Kindle screen or whatever the case, or are you reading it to try and actually figure out your own thoughts? In which case, you know, like these these human technologies that are designed for humans, we have to kind of use them in a human way if we're going to get what we want out of it. And again, ask yourself what you want out of it. If you just want to be entertained, you want to read some Jeffrey Archer or whatever you want to escape from the real world, by all means, go ahead and do it. But understand the difference of like the purpose of why you're doing these things. Is it entertainment, escapism, or is it some sort of form of personal growth that you're trying to get into? I think you should become a motivational speaker for reading. <laughs> um, you, it's, it's very encouraging. You sound, you make it sound like this this kind of beautiful art that uh, you you kind of don't want to miss out on if you if if, it, if you're someone listening to you for the first time.